I'm heading out with Paul Minta, Key West chef and boat captain, for a catch and cook adventure. The goal is to go out and catch a few lobster, bring them back, cook them up. And so I'm excited. So I'm going out uh, lobstering with Paul. And uh, you know, after we catch these lobster, we're gonna we'll go cook them up. We're gonna cook them, but we're gonna cook them up the right way. Paul was just saying this is his second boat. That's his first boat right there. Yeah, I didn't feel it was waxed appropriately, so we're just gonna take the dinghy out. Yeah, it you looks know, it's a li this is a little better on gas. Paul is sort of a Florida Keys Renaissance man. He's a boat captain, a chef rum distiller, and professional kiteboarder. Every day changes. Like, yeah. you don't run out of things. So if it's windy out, I go kiteboard. Yeah. If it's flat come out, I go out and get dinner. We got a pretty cool day planned. We're going to head out into uh, the back country a little bit and go look for some lobsters. And if he can actually catch a lobster, I don't know. All right, I'm ready to get wet. Go catch it in the ocean, go right into the kitchen, cook it, eat it. Same day. Lobstering is about a bully net. You got to have something to get the lobster. And then you got to have a tickle stick, something to get the lobster out of its hole. A lobster is always backed up in something. So this is that ne great negotiator that gets them out of that hole. Attached to that is uh, something very important. This is a lobster gauge. Uh, this measures three inches. And uh, you measure the lobster from the carapaces, which is where the horns are to, the, to the, where the tail begins. And you have to have this on you while you're lobstering. And then this net right here, you put it on top of him, the lobster goes up in the net, and the lobster goes in the boat, and eventually he's going to make it into a pan. A pretty simple process. And thanks to the great spot Paul has picked out, it's not long before that process pays off. Hey, got him. You got a keeper, Paul. There you go. Right that here, looks buddy. like dinner. Heck yeah. Let's see that sucker, man. Woo! That's what we came out here for, right there. To me, this is such a big part of being in the Keys, is being out here in it. And uh, what an opportunity to be out here with Paul today. That looks ah. like dinner to me. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm going to go try to get one more. We need at least two for lunch, so be right back. Look at that. <laughs> Not bad, right? 30 minutes out of here. Pretty good, man. Respectable. Yeah. What do you say we go back in and uh, cook them? Oh, man. I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> I worked up an appetite. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to head over to Isle Cook. I do a lot of cooking classes there, and it's a great place to show Chad how to cook a Florida lobster perfectly. Paul starts with his technique to crack open the shell to reveal the meat in the lobster's tail. The key here, not to damage or cut the meat. This technique keeps the meat inside undisturbed and therefore nice and tender when cooked. All right, learning something new. What's next? We're gonna put some ingredients in it to go and stuff it. So today in this lobster, I'm gonna use some fresh oregano that's growing, fresh basil that grows really easily down here, sea salt, and then a little bit of olive oil. We can tap a little bit of butter in it. And then of course, rum will finish the whole thing. All right, baby, yeah. There we go. So our lobster's cooking. I've cooked enough seafood to know you don't walk away, you don't get a beer, you sit here and watch this thing cook because you don't want to, what, you don't want to overcook it, right? Yeah, probably a beer is ruined more of a meal than you want to. <laughs> yeah. We're going to probably go about 11 minutes on this. We'll, yeah. we'll check, but we're going to look for some signs. We want to look at the lobster shell. Okay. As it starts to get red a little bit, there should be a little bit of spring to it, but we want to make sure that all of a sudden we just don't, you know, we did all this work and now we overcook it yeah. as well. After amazing. only 11 minutes at 400 oh degrees gosh. in the oven, our lobster Let's is ready. And we'll bring it right over to here. Oh my gosh. Paul, it doesn't get any better than that. To think that this thing was in the water two hours ago. This is yeah. what we have. We have seafood. We have a little bit of land and a lot of ocean with a lot of different things yeah. seasonally in it. So you're always going to come down here different times of the year and get something different. OK, Chef, what's next? I do happen to have a little bit of key lime rum that I made. Hey, kind we're, of in a the, toast. we're in the Keys. Why not? I guarantee you it's going to be something he hasn't tasted before. It's going to be really tender, and all those herbs are going to pop out. It should fall apart, all right? Oh, that is so good. You know, the whole thing about people coming down here is just learning these little secrets. Yeah. You know, speak to the locals, and these are the things you want to learn. If you're going to come mm. all the way down to the Florida Keys and enjoy yeah. it, really enjoy it. You know, the spirit of the sea yields many unique flavors here in the Florida Keys. 
Perhaps none more unique than this right here, stone crab. Sweet, delectable, and one of the ocean's most renewable resources. More importantly, it's one of my favorites. So, in an effort to fully immerse myself in the Florida Keys culture, I signed up for one of their signature seafood events involving a whole lot of these. Stone crabs! A stone crab eating contest at Keys Fisheries and Marathon? Sounds too good to be true. There's a lot that goes into preparing. There's all kinds of different tool choices for competition crab cracking. Ah, ugh. all right, that's not gonna work. A little friendly advice never hurts in these situations. I'm trying to figure this out. What's You've never the best done this? Way? So this is Gary. Gary runs this place. <laughs> and um, I've got a couple tools here. I don't know what the heck this let is. Let me throw Remember that out. Let me just get rid of that. Well, get rid of that. That's gone. Gary spends a few minutes going over the different One, tools with me. Then leaves me to my own devices. Let's try this. So here's how this works. Each competitor has to crack and eat 25 stone crab claws. Ho, 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 I like this. And the fastest to do it wins. <sighs> yeah. Pretty simple, right? That's what I'm talking about. Well, we'll see. Now that my weapon of choice has been chosen, on to the next challenge, figuring out the rules. Yes, there are rules. Contest rules. This is where we are with our society. <laughs> exactly. Stone crab contest rules and liability and litigation all right here. I do want to win. So after registering, than buying a house. I'm off to check out the competition, including the defending champion, who shows remarkably good sportsmanship and offering some strategy. The knuckles, make sure you break those real good. Make sure you break the knuckles. To get this stuff out. That's what kills me. This is where the money's going. Yeah. <laughs> the money's going. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do you pick and eat or pick and pile? No, I actually break it first and then I eat it. You eat it as you right. go. Right, and then at the end I make sure that I eat everything else. Yeah, well, the best I gave you, I gave you all the, all the hints, yeah, right? All so that's all right, it. Thank you. you that's it. No excuse. If I win, I win fair and square. <laughs> Anyone looking for the spirit of the Florida Keys? You have a crab cape here, yes. which you don't see these a lot wow. anymore. We'll certainly find oh, some at this goodness. annual event. Give me the spirit. Here we go. Spirit. But believe it or not, there is a serious side to this contest. Stone crabs are a $40 million industry and present one of the more unique harvests these waters have to offer. Stone crab is the only sustainable seafood that we really have in this country. What does that mean? It means we take the claws off the crab, put the crab back in the water, it grows new claws up to four or five times. It's like a miracle. It's, it's like a seafood there's miracle. nothing else that does that. Nothing in the world. All right, time to crush some crab. Number three, Chad Crawford! I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't feel right. More of a cape than an apron. I don't feel like I have more than everybody else. Go! All right, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Confident. Come on, put those hands up! Put those hands up! As expected, Juan Malin finished first with a time of 15 minutes and six seconds. But hey, I wasn't giving up quite yet. Is somebody gonna beat Chad in number two? All right. Good job, man. That was awesome. In second place, Chad Crapper! A pretty respectable showing. Of course, now I know where I'll be next year when stone crab season starts. That means I gotta go back next year. Yeah, you. <laughs> next stop on our tour, turtles. This dinosaur has been around 200 million years, wow. and they're still here. Some of the Keys' cutest residents show us the environmental boost being provided by local conservationists. And seafood isn't the only bounty coming from the sea when we return. Welcome back to Spirit of the Florida Keys. 
You know, part of the spirit you feel when you're here in the Keys is this incredible connection to the environment. The land, the water, all intertwined, each relying on each other to define and sustain life. Let's take a look at some very special Keys residents who are making sure that connection stays strong. There's a place in the Keys that's giving some much needed help to some of the oldest animals on the planet. This is a real dinosaur. This dinosaur has been around 200 million years, wow. and they're still here. Richie Moretti runs a hospital, a turtle hospital, located in Marathon in the Florida Keys. Wow. Yes, you are. Wow. I, will bring you, I will bring you some more squid. Over the last three decades, Richie and his staff have helped over 3,000 sick and injured sea turtles. Two of the things that we do is education, making people love them as much as we do, and doing research. Every now and then, you'll be working on something with an animal, and you'll find cures for people. They have such personality in their face. Yep. I mean, it is just incredible. Rescued sea turtles can be seen on daily tours at the hospital. They get plenty of care from Richie and his staff. We treat these guys just like they are, that each one of them is really important. We love it and we fund it through education. Can I take one home? No. <laughs> you have to take one of my staff with you. Okay. <laughs> I got to see firsthand how highly skilled this staff is. Daily is a juvenile green that just had an x-ray and we're gonna take her over for a laser treatment. Wow. You got time to help out? I do. All right. I joined manager yeah, Betty Zirkelback for a closer look at the level of care offered here at the hospital. It's important to wear protective eyewear. Are you messing with me or is this uh, part this is of the for deal? Real. <laughs> okay. Does Daly enjoy this? Do you get a sense that he knows what's going on here? I think that it doesn't feel bad. Let me just say that. And I think that animals are pretty smart. And when we do something that makes them feel better, they start to relate that treatment with feeling better. And it absolutely, they'll stay calm for it. So eventually, Daly will make it back out into the ocean. How, how long do you think it'll take? Well, Daly has probably one or two more surgeries in front of him. Then we'll keep him for six to 12 months, and make sure those tumors don't regrow. We'll get him fat and happy, and then we'll return him to his ocean home. Well, Daly is a lucky turtle. Once released, these turtles have quite the backyard to recover in, as the Florida Keys is home to the only living contiguous coral barrier reef in the continental United States. Coral reefs, shipwrecks, seagrass beds, and fisheries are woven throughout these subtropical islands and the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is in place to protect these marine resources. The Coral Restoration Foundation is a group of spirited conservationists who are planting coral throughout the Keys one at a time. I caught up with program manager Jessica Levy. The reef system here is immensely important for supporting life biodiversity. Coral Restoration Foundation works to actively outplant corals onto degraded reef sites. We start in a nursery setting and then we move to a local reef. Um, we place the corals through a process called outplanting. A lot of people don't realize the, the potential for impact they can have on the reef. Right, a lot of people don't realize how connected everything is. The program works and it works really well. Some of the first corals that I ever outplanted, I actually did as part of a dive program. And as of a couple months ago, I was back in the exact same site and what started with a single coral was now probably about the size of a coffee table. One of the best things about the great work the foundation is doing is that anyone who wants to help can. Let's do this. It's called volunteerism. Most people come on a dive trip and, you know, chase a few fish, blow some bubbles, float around underwater on the reef. But when they're joining us on a dive program, they're learning about the reef, they're learning about the importance of corals, and then they get to spend two dives actually having a hands-on experience. Roxanne Boonstra grew up in nearby Miami and oversees the volunteerism dive program for the foundation. You have a personal investment in seeing these reefs restored yes. back to where you remember them being as a kid. Exactly. I want to be able to go catch my lobster. I want to be able to go fishing as well. I want our reefs to be sustainable and something beautiful for multiple generations in the future to enjoy. It's a goal worth reaching and a goal worth sharing. Is this the new face of tourism here in the Keys? Hope so. Yes. Come down, make a difference, do something different. Yeah. yeah. I like it.
few locations embody the spirit of the environment down here, like Big Pine Key and the Lower Keys. Located between Marathon and Key West, just past the Seven Mile Bridge, it's a place locals refer to as the Natural Keys. It's home to vast natural wonders and over 8,500 acres of hiking trails to explore. Up next, we'll take a tasty journey to see what flavor artisans are creating right here in the islands. There's a lot going on in this there salad. Is. That is almost flavor overload. We'll be right back on Spirit of the Florida Keys. From Key Largo to Key West, we're in search of the spirit of the Florida Keys. You know, the Keys means different things to different people. And we've shown you how that spirit can motivate you to visit and enjoy this beautiful place. But it's also a place to come and get creative. In fact, there are some artisans who live right here, creating flavors that originated on these very islands. My journey to find some creative flavors down here starts at Florida Keys Brewing in Isla Mirada. Their craft beers are giving new meaning to the term, drink local. I think what's very special about this brewery is the fact that we take so much inspiration from our location itself. We're very excited to gather ingredients from our environment, including local mangoes, key limes, honey, lemongrass, uh, anything that we can possibly get in from local suppliers. We use as many local ingredients as possible. So what do we have here? We've got our Iguana Bait Honey Hibiscus Kolsch and our Pucker Power Florida Vice. Okay, Iguana Bait. Pucker Power. Pucker Power. Yes. Iguanas are an invasive species down here, so we're not particularly thrilled about them, especially because their favorite meal is hibiscus. If you have a hibiscus plant, they will pick that clean. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the color. Oh yeah. Get a little swirl, nice, bright, clean. And you need to do a little swirl and pass it real quick under your nose. Swirl and pass. Yeah. There you go. You get that wow. big whiff yeah. of honey right on the nose. Now right can there. we drink? Yes, absolutely. Okay, drink. <laughs> because we use hibiscus in our beer, we've named it Iguana Bait. Oh, man. That's good. <laughs> Isn't it? I can see why that's your more popular beer. Absolutely. Wow. Can't keep it in stock. <laughs> so right here, you brought out some dried hibiscus. Yes. And you're going to notice a lot of that flavor right here. So you take a big whiff, and it'll translate really well. It's a very oh, strong man, profile. So Wow. And what's really That's great incredible. is that the honey um, is seasonal. So depending on what flowers are in season and blooming at the time, it'll yeah. have little subtleties in your beer from batch to batch as well. So local elements mm -hmm. coming together here to make a beer that essentially has some of the Florida Keys in it. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. It's fantastic, yes. Wow. <laughs> Next stop, Key West, where I'm meeting up with Annalise Smith, owner of Key West Food Tours really looking for the spirit of the Florida Keys and I really believe that it's through our cuisine. It's through our local indigenous flavors and ingredients that really showcase the Florida Keys. The best way to learn about a culture is to try their food, I think. This is where the conch salad is, right? Best conch salad. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? Welcome to Loggerheads. Can we try some of your conch salad? Absolutely. Are you buying? How did, should I pay? I don't know how this works. It's on the house. On the house. You got it. Yes. The keys are so affordable. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Are you ready? Wow. <laughs> and at least I can smell this. I mean, so there's a lot going on in this there salad. Is. Tell me about it. So this is the conch salad, or it's also called conch ceviche. Okay. And we have conch in it. There's onion, green pepper, red pepper. But really, the binder that brings it all together is the key lime juice. Key lime juice. So it's the local key limes that we use that really um, brings out the flavor in the conch salad. I mean, just smelling it, it's like, wow. You ready? Oh, I'm so ready. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Wow. That is almost flavor overload. So good. So flavorful. Very flavorful. And then this is the kicker. You can't beat it, right? Look at this view. Absolutely stunning. I mean, not only do you get good food, but you get a great view with it. Well, Annalise, thank you so much for showing me some local flavor. Lots of flavor. Yes. <laughs> and you know, this is just one of the hundreds of places in the Florida Keys that are serving local and indigenous foods. Yeah. And it's good. I can see why your food tour business is taking off. Thank People you. People want this experience. Absolutely. And you do a great job. Thank you so much for sharing this with me today. When you think of the Florida Keys, you think of diving, you think of fishing. But this right here might be the one thing people think of most, the key lime. Key lime pie is so identified with this part of the country that it mm. was declared Florida's state dessert in 2006. But its origins are surrounded in mystery, and its ingredients 
endlessly debated. To get some answers, I caught up with Kermit Carpenter, a man whose name has been synonymous with key lime pie for over two decades. Um, there he is in the corner right there. Let's check him out. Come on. Mr. Kermit, it's a pleasure. How you doing? Welcome to Kermit's. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Uh, Free samples. You got me. <laughs> You've done that before, haven't you? Just a few times. <laughs> Kermit is simply the king of key lime. Just take a look at his shop. There's over 150 different key lime concoctions in here. Where do we start here? Let's start right here with the juice. This is key lime juice. This key lime juice. This is the juice. lime. This little teeny lime. So the juice, that's, that's critical. OK, what's next? You got all kinds of okay, stuff in here. OK, everything that's in here. We put a little key lime into it. We start here with jellies. We've got key lime honey. We've got key lime tea. We've got olive oils. That's my best seller. You can put key lime in anything. You can. What is this? Key lime wine. Seriously? Seriously. Key lime wine. Key lime wine. What can you not put key lime in? Motor oil. Motor oil. Haven't done that yet. Of course. There's a lot of key lime stuff here in this shop. We've just kind of scratched the surface. I'm excited because obviously you are the king of, of a key lime, and you're going to show me how to make a key lime pie. We're going to try. We're going to try. It's one of the easiest pies to make. OK. So you'll have no problem. <laughs> Come this way. Well, zing. Kermit's shop pushes out over 200 key lime pies a day, but it's a pretty simple recipe. Is this it? This is it. To make a pie, all you need is key lime juice, sweet and condensed milk, egg yolks, and a crust. This takes two minutes to make. You so ready? So show me what to do. OK. You've got six egg yolks ready to go. So you did that for me. Thank I did you. that for you. We're going to whisk them? What are we going to do? You're going to add some sweet and condensed milk to that. OK. Two cans. Oh, yeah. So Kermit, where did the key lime pie originate? Well, there's a lot of stories about where pie originated. But I think, in my personal opinion, that probably the fishermen started taking the cans of sweet and condensed milk. They'd put it in their ice hole in their boats when they'd go out fishing. They'd take a couple of limes with them. And they'd squeeze that lime into the milk, and they had an instant custard dessert. So the lime would interact with the cream with the milk. And, and milk and make like a custard. Right. You're okay. going to see that right now. Now okay. show him how light that is and how it lifted up and let it drop. Look how light that is. Very nice. Now, add the juice to that. I'll pour and you okay. whisk. You'll see it cook the egg. Wow. And thicken right up into a custard. Well, so it's like a chemical reaction here. Absolutely. It's like a science project. And it's got nice and thick. You're going to spatula that right into the crust right here. It's and, ready to go. And you have a, this is graham cracker? This is graham cracker. I know there's a debate on the crust. What, what do you prefer? I prefer the graham cracker, but you could use any crust. It doesn't matter. You can put meringue on it. You can put whipped cream on it. Meringue didn't go on it in the beginning because they didn't bake it. So you don't have any hard, fast rules, whatever you really like? Absolutely. Fix it the way you like it. OK, you're going to level that up. We're going to pop it in the oven for about 20 minutes. 350 degrees, just to harden the eggs up a little bit, firm you're, it up a little. You're right. This was simple. OK, my key lime pie is going in. Like that? Whoa. Before I know it, my pie is ready. We slice it and serve it up. There you go, uh, sir. You're giving me the big piece. I'm giving you. you the big piece. And dig in to one of the most iconic tastes the Florida Keys has to offer. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I think it looks good. Could I push some pies? I think you could sell some pie. Stay with us. There's still more to come on Spirit of the Florida Keys. Wow, what a beautiful way to end our trip. You know, I started this journey to discover what makes these islands and their spirit so amazing. I think what's so unique about the spirit here in the Florida Keys, it's the people, laid back, creative, friendly, and just a bit off-center. It serves to ignite an incredible passion for both living in and caring for the Florida Keys. It's the geography. The Florida Keys sit right out in the ocean. Surrounded by water, it's central to every aspect of life here. But perhaps most of all, it's the atmosphere, an island paradise that beckons with fun, sun, and sensational spirit. Well, thanks for joining me on this journey. I hope we brought you a sense of what it's like to feel, see, and taste the spirit down here. I encourage you to come down here and experience it for yourself. And maybe you can define the spirit of the Florida Keys.
To learn more about the Florida Keys, visit fla-keys.com. Hotel accommodations for cast and crew provided by Margaritaville Resort and Marina in Key West. For more information, visit margaritavillekeywestresort.com. Islanda Resort in Isla Morada. For more information, visit islanderfloridakeys.com. Skipjack Resort and Marina. For more information, visit skipjackresortmarathon.com.